Hello. I don't know if you can see that, but that, that's a blizzard out of the window. This is second time in two weeks. Um, just about to go into a, um, a, a site meeting. I'm, I'm in the van. I'm just going to go brave that weather in a minute, but uh, I'll record the week's video first. Uh, it's a question time one. Uh, a bit different. We were asked it live. So a, a client asked us you know, in person, face to face or on, on Zoom, uh, as you'd expect these days. Uh, and the question was, what... Um, what what's the worst that could happen? It was kind of kind of a pessimistic one, uh, a sensible question. I, I guess it was uh, focused on uh, protecting the downside, if you like. You know, uh, what 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 is the worst that can happen? And um, yeah, do you know what? The team struggled to answer the question. They sort of blustered around a little bit um, uh, without realizing they answer the question every day. But you know, rarely does anybody ask it quite the way that this chap phrased it. Um, yeah, the first answer they gave was, you know, I suppose your house could burn down, but it would be insured. Uh, and then they're sort of struggling to think of some other disaster situations, you know, where a tenant might not pay their rent. Um, it doesn't happen very often. And actually, you can get rent and legal insurance for that as well. You can get that insured. Uh, tenant could trash the property. But again, we know that doesn't happen very often as well. Um, you've got a deposit. And actually, if they trash the property as opposed to just causing a little bit of damage that's not covered by, by the deposit sometimes that's covered by insurance as well you know you can check your insurance policy uh, malicious damage cover should be on it you shouldn't really be paying any extra for malicious damage just a good policy should uh, should include it it kind of dawned on me the reason that the team couldn't answer it very well is because we um we manage out the risk um and they simply don't encounter the problems and they, they just weren't fr fr front of mind in the, in, in the head because we don't have so many problems. Of course, the problems are there and they are very real. Um, you know, the, the nightmare scenario is you know, all of the above. You know? Tenant doesn't pay the rent. Um, you can't get possession, can't get them out. Maybe there's some maintenance that needs attending to. Maybe they get more serious and maybe even reported to the um, like environmental health officer. Maybe you know, that, that, that could happen. Um, that can result if you don't fix the work because maybe your tenant's not letting you in um, in a prohibition notice, you know, a, a unfit for habitation notice or um, at the very least a, a notice that says you must do this work and if you don't, you can't actually sell the house, you know. Um, I've seen a landlord reduced to um, selling a house in that situation. They're not going to get the best price, of course. Uh, tenants, tenants in there and actually they're not allowed to sell the house because there's a notice on the uh, on the property and they didn't quite realize that yeah really really messy the nightmare you know um but not remotely possible in our business um as a lettings business we, we see you know rarely something quite as bad as that but um regularly people landlords coming through the door they've got themselves into a bit of a mess and they're trying to get us to unpick it that nightmare is simply not possible in a well-run, well-managed business. So what is the downside? The downside is not managing things well. If you focus on having the right the right house in the right area, re renovated in the right way, so you know, it's, it's a, of a decent and safe house standard, you focus on getting a good tenant in the property, make sure the referencing's right, um, are all of our tenants have to earn £18,000 a year and have good credit. If they don't, they need a guarantor that has £21,000 income, good credit, and is a homeowner, yeah? Um, wrap it all up in perfect paperwork. You can't have a single I or T missing. You know, the dots and the crosses are going to be perfect. Um, and then once the tenants move in, just have a relentless focus on keeping the rental relationship well. Don't underestimate that. Uh, looking after the property, and that's that's quite a few moving parts in that. You've got to check check a tenant in well, do mid-tenant inspections, and of course check a tenant out. You've also got to look after the maintenance as as as, as the um, uh, tenancy rolls on as well. And none of that's particularly easy to do, but it's all very easy to um, organise to be done. Yeah, you know, from a landlord's point of view. Um, then of course you've got to make sure you collect the rent, and um, that's a, that's another art as well. You know, with le uh, j j just over a one percent arrears rate, um, I know that my team is really rather good at it. The nightmare scenario is very uh, rare; it doesn't happen very often. But in my opinion, something far more damaging and um, well, frustrating, you know, 
uh, happens a lot more frequently. And actually, it could, could be a little bit worse because in some ways, you know, the short, sharp shock to a landlord that says, um, Cracky, you've screwed that up completely. You'll learn your lesson and you'll either shape up or you'll ship out. Um, the death by a thousand cuts that I've just about to uh, describe might in many ways be, be worse. Um, I think I regularly meet a landlord who you know, sometimes quite forthright in their opinions, um, you know, convinced they're doing things right, um, and been totally straight. I might be, I might be describing myself ten years ago. You know, none, none of the things that uh, come out of my mouth these days um, were, were uh, in my head ten years ago. This is a story I can tell from experience, bit of experience sometimes. Um, but I, I, I see them. You know, very convinced that they're doing a good job in uh, the, the the running the property portfolio. They don't realise one some of the things that they're missing out on, and the other key thing is they haven't realised that the true profit potential um, is in managing a property portfolio well. You know, done averagely, everything turns out really rather average. The profit margins are pretty slim, um, and you will be constantly struggling. That's what it will feel like. If you can optimise the property portfolio, make sure that everything's running well and open your eyes to what good good is and push that out further, um, that's where the real opportunity comes in. Really, if you're building the building blocks of a property portfolio, one property on top of the other on top of the other, you've got to be thinking like that to uh, be able to scale the business. Uh, anything less than that, and it's going to be dragging you back. So, um, an open invitation, if you like. Um, we we run a, a weekly discovery call as a business, and yeah, regularly landlords join us, and they want to find out how they want to they, they build an empire, or maintain the one they've got, or optimize the one they've got, or both. You know, um, so open invitation to attend that call. No obligation. I'll be on it. A couple of the team members will be on it. Um, it's a it's a group call, so there'll be there'll be several people on there. You get to answer, ask all the questions and get them answered, and then afterwards, if it's something you think you know what that's piqued my interest, and I think there's something I want to take further, then there's a one to one after that where um, you get into the nitty gritty. Sometimes, always, it's not not appropriate to talk about the personal details. There's not time. It's not appropriate um, in a, in in the group scenario, uh, but it is nice to also hear other landlords talking and asking the questions. Sometimes they ask the question that uh, that maybe you were thinking or maybe you hadn't thought of. You know, so yeah. If if um, you are the landlord that uh, maybe in the back of your mind you're thinking, I'm sure that there's something we can do that's better here. Join us on one of those calls. I'll put the uh, the link in the description. I might even, if I work out how, put a link here so you can click on it. You know, if I manage to work that out, it's there. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's a very worthwhile put, put process to benchmark your property portfolio against what we know good is. And the results are quite often surprising to some landlords. So join us on a call. Hopefully uh, I'll get to see some of you on a call, a Zoom call. Um, so bye for now.